welcome to the Jamaica Funk Show. And tonight is, of course, Black, Black History, History Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, my co-host Joe is here with me tonight. Hello, people. How are you? I can't hear you. Oh, I'm great, too. Thank you very much for asking. <laughs> <laughs> She's a little silly and dizzy at the same time. Um, but anyways, tonight we're going to be doing a first Prince Rogers Nelson, Prince, because his birthday is tonight. Happy birthday, Happy Prince. Happy birthday, my Prince. Yes, and unfortunately, we don't have any Prince music, but we're just going to give you some information about who Prince was in case you all don't know who he is. We feel that he is a black historian. Yes, he is. And it's not that they don't know who he is, but we're going to just give him a little bit more. A little, a little yeah, something Some, that you may, may or may not, not know. know. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And then we're going to do, um, come on, help me out, sister. <laughs> um, we're going to do... <laughs> She's doing Bob Marley, y'all. Yeah, Bob Marley. I don't Marley. know why she can forget that. She <laughs> oh, I didn't forget <laughs> that now. <laughs> it's not a tongue twister. <laughs> I'm trying to think she's of these so other happy. guys' names. <laughs> Wait a minute, she's got some. She went and got some some real names. One is oh, what? No. Norbin. Some other real names. Yeah, there's, there's a real black, name. Real yeah. black men are David Cosway. Okay, David Cosway. And I haven't figured out how to pronounce his name yet, but it's Norbert Rio. Norbert Rio. He's he, French. Yes, it's a French last Born name. Born in New Orleans, honey. Yeah. Born in New Orleans. Yeah. Or and, Louisiana. Right. And but, I'm going to give some unknown history about black politicians. And we got some Joe's poetry. And of course, tonight we got some sweet, sweet reggae music. So sit back, relax. And uh, you know what? I'm going to hit you with some Bob. I do got some Bob Marley. So, I'm going to hit you with a couple of uh, of his songs before we get started, if this uh, this crazy uh, machine will let me get to it. <laughs> as long as it ain't my fault. <laughs> no, nah, it ain't your fault. Fortunately, you are Not in the clear. <laughs> um, oh, I found it. Good. So, sit back, relax. And grab that last piece of jerk chicken and whatever it is that you're eating and drinking. And get ready for some show enough, show enough. Mama, shut your mouth, reggae music. Well, I remind.
you would have loved to hear that and we'll play that okay we, we will play it we will play it um, um so but anyways let's uh let's Switch start gears. with yeah Switch yeah gears. let's let's start with um prince rogers nelson the the artist formerly known as, as right. right he was born june 7th once again happy birthday prince 1958 mm-hmm. and he died april 21st 2016. So he's been dead a year and a month. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. A, a year, year, a month, year and two months. A month and a couple a year of days. And, and a couple yeah. Of weeks or yeah, a yeah. month and a couple of days, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he was an American born singer, songwriter, actor, multi instrumentalist, philanthropist, dancer, and record producer. Um, he was a musical genius. They call him innovator, but I call him a musical genius. I like innovator, but go well, ahead. innovator is a sophisticated, sophisticated yes, word, but is. genius is an even better word okay. because people understand that. Okay. Who was known for his electric work, flamboyant stage present, extravagant dressing, uh, makeup, wide vocal range, 
His music integrated wide varieties of styles, including funk, rock, R&B, new wave soul, psychedelic, and pop. He has sold over 100 million records worldwide, making him one of the best-selling artists of all times. He won seven Grammys, an American Music Award, a Golden Globe Award, and an Academy Award for the film Purple Rain. He was included in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2004. His first year of eligibility. So he was eligible for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and was inducted in the same year. That's amazing. Yes, it is. It that really does is. make him a genius, you know. And <laughs> uh, Rolling Stone ranked Prince at number 27 on its list of 100 greatest artists the most influential artist of the rock and roll era. Mm. Prince was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and developed interest in music as a child. He signed his record contract with Warner Brothers at the age of 18 and released his debut album, For You, in 1978. His 1979 album, Prince Went Platinum. And next, in the next three records, Dirty Minds, Controversy, uh, well, Dirty Minds is 1980, Controversy is 1981, and uh, 1999. I was in Paris for 1999. Okay, whatever. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> Continues his success show showcasing Prince prominently sexual lyrics and blending of funk, dance, and rock music. In 1984, he began referring to his backup band as the Revolution and released Purple Rain. The soundtrack album to his ep epitomous 19... Ep epitomous. Epitomous. I, I, that's what I said. Epitomous. Epitomous. Okay, whatever. Go on, go on. 1984 <laughs> film debut. It quickly became his most critically and commercially successful release, spending... 24 consecutive consecutive weeks on the Billboard Top 200 and selling over 20 million units worldwide. Of which I bought one. Yes. Yes. <laughs> After releasing the album Around the World in a Day, 1985, and Parade in 1986, The Revolution, This Band, and Prince released a double album, Sign of the Times, yeah, baby. as a solo artist. He released three more solo albums before debuting the New Power Generation Band in 1991. Prince, we just got to say we love you. Rest in peace, my brother. Yes, and keep on doing whatever you're doing in the next world, baby. Yeah, and we, we know we go on forever. And we hope you hear us talking about you because, you know, you dead folks got some powers we don't have in the living. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Uh, I know that's right. I, I, I truly firmly and wholeheartedly believe that. So who you got, girlfriend? Well, tonight I am going to uh, try to give a little um, history lesson. Okay. And tonight I'm going to do of our 101 little known black history facts. People who seem to have just died into obscurity but actually live on today in the work that they did. Black people, African Americans. Okay, so this first one is number 83 on the list, and his name is David Cosway Jr. He was born in Nashville, Tennessee, and was an expert in heating, ventilation, air conditioning, and he designed the hearing system for Radio City Music Hall in New York. During his lifetime, he received some 40 patents relating to heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. So all that cool air we have today is due to the works of a black man. How about all that? All right. All right. Second, we have number 81 because we did number 82 already. And number 81 is, please don't hurt me, people. His name was Norbert Rilliot, born the son of a French trader and a slave in New Orleans. He was educated in, in France. Returning to the U.S., he developed an evaporation system for refining sugar. 
Right, mm-hmm. right. He he patented he patented this device. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure what it looks like in 1846. Wow. Right. Rouleau's evaporation technique is still in use today in the sugar industry, and it is also used for the manufacturing of soap and other products. Oh, cool, cool. Well, guys, um, we're gonna give you some Joe's poetry right quick. Joe, what what do you think I should what you what you think I should play for? Well what you got on the you know what? Well, I got I got, got a little bit of something. <laughs> I got a little something something. Could uh, I if I could just um if I could just is cool. Okay, cool. Let's do that. Uh guys sit back, relax and get ready for some serious, serious Joe's poetry. Well I remind Oh, come on. Because of all the tasks that are left undone from the day before, no matter how many lists I make, no matter how many check marks I make on each line, no matter how many times I strike off a task to mark the completion of the many obstacles that block my every day, it's never done. The obstacles are just getting out of the bed, my bed, my warm, cozy, wonderful bed, because the dream I was having was one of my favorites. I was holding a flower to my lips, and you come up behind me and replace it with yours. And I can feel how full and wet and soft they are. I can feel my hands caressing your hair and face. Everything is warm and soft and hard and full. And I can feel myself drifting into that euphoria called an orgasm in my dreams. And the alarm sounds off, and as bad as I want it to hit the snooze button, I know I should just wake up and face the day. That damn list. That list of tasks that I mean to accomplish every single day. And it would mean so much to me if I could just make myself feel that way sometimes. I can do so much by myself on my own. And I don't have any self-esteem issues. I don't need a knight in shining armor. Because I can save myself in this wretched world most days. So don't get me wrong or get it twisted. It's not bad. I just rather have a partner sometimes. Someone who realizes that it doesn't hurt to sing the praises of the one you love. I just want to know if you're still in this with me. Or are you just sitting on the sidelines, joining in when you feel like it? Because it seems like too much work for you now. So my head is just screaming, wake up. And I tell it, shut up. Because it's way too damn early in the morning to have to deal with this. On the list you go to. My bed, my pillow, my cozy socks, some soft music, and hopes of my dream lover returning to me. Right in my humble home 
No restriction, you'll be free to do. I'm leaving me to you. So good, you. So we're back, and we are going to do uh, Mr. Bob Marley. So, <clears throat> did you know, Joe, that um, Bob Marley was um, a very, very poor young man? Yes, that He's I did know. Very, he comes from a very poor family. As, as poor as, and I saw this on they TV. Were they, they were dirt poor. They have one Mars pair of shoes. Bruno Mars was dirt poor. Bruno yeah, oh yeah, was Bruno dirt poor. poor. So yeah, yeah I knew yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. Bob Marley, um, uh, they were saying that he, you know, had one pair of shoes and maybe one suit of clothes to wear and what have you. Yeah. Um, said most of the time the kids ran around because he, um, he, well, let me just get into it, Come and I'll ahead. tell you a story. Yeah, because I'm listening. I'm waiting to hear. <laughs> so, <laughs> Robert Nestor Marley was born in St. Mary's, Jamaica, in a place called Nine Mile. He arrived on February 6, 1945, in his grandparents' house, whose grandmother lived to be 135 years old. Bob's mother was black, and his father was white. Because of his parentage, he called himself an outcast. <clears throat> when Bob was 16, he and his mother moved from Nine Mile to Kingston, Jamaica, in a place called Trenchtown, uh, in search of a better life. That's where the magic all began to happen. <clears throat> Bob worked as a welder with a guy by the name of Desmond Becker, now, Bob and Desmond shared a love of music, so one day, Desmond went into the studio and recorded a song, and he let Bob hear it. Well, Bob was smitten. Bob begged Desmond to take him into the studio so he could record a record, and Desmond did just that. 
the name of the record was No Judge because Bob was tired of people judging people. And so he made a song called No Judge to express his sentiments, which didn't sell. After they recorded his first single, the people at the recording studio wanted to change Bob's name from Bob to Adam. Bob wasn't having any parts of that, so <laughs> he remained Bob Marley. Yeah. Yeah. Soon, Bob became friends with Peter Tosh, Benny Whaler, Junior Birthweight, excuse me, Beverly Colosso, and Sherry Smith. They formed a group called the Teenagers, which was sort of short-lived. Um, they changed their name a couple of times, but they wound up becoming the Whalers. Mm. At the age of 17, Bob's mother moved to the U.S., which left Bob homeless. Now, a record producer by the name of Clement Coxon Dodd, who also discovered the Whalers, gave Bob a place to stay along with another friend of his named Dudley Sidley. Coxon was like a father figure to him. He gave Bob a record player and some foreign music so that Bob can listen to it and get a sense of how to formulate his music when he's writing it. Mm -hmm. Then a guy by the name of um, Doug, wait a minute, not Doug, Drew, by the name of Drew Hicks, a manager, he was a recording manager. He took on the Whalers as a project. He told the Whalers to practice and practice and practice. So they did. They practiced and they also did small gigs all over town, even did a concert in the cemetery because Drew told them that it would give them courage if they would sing for the, as they call it, the duppies, the oh. dead people. Oh, I got a lot to learn. Keep it going. <laughs> it took the Whalers two years before Hicks said that they were ready for a real concert. Simmer Down was the Whalers' first number one hit. It went to number one on the charts in Jamaica. Then they had 10 top hits also that they recorded a little bit later on, but they never made it any further than Jamaica. Now, Bob was a shy guy, and he had been watching this young lady by the name of Rita Anderson. Bob didn't have the courage to go up to her and talk to her, so he sent his friend Bunny over to talk to her. Ain't that just the way men do it? Yeah, some of them. <laughs> this young lady became his only legal wife. They were married on February 10, 1966 and was by his side until Bob's passing. Bob had 11 children. Not all were by Rita Marley. Uh, as a matter of fact, Bob had children by Cindy Breakspear, who was Miss World, Cheryl Murray, to name, wait, and, wait, Cheryl, wait, wait. and Cheryl Murray. Huh? Dude, dude had a relationship with Miss World, as in the Miss World pageant mm -hmm, Miss World? Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? They they actually lived together for a little while. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. While he was married to Rita. All um, right, go on. Yeah, and then he also uh, had a baby by a young lady by the name of Cheryl Murray. Just to name a few of them. Bob, they said Bob had nine baby mamas. Uh-huh. What a lucky man. <laughs> I'm being joking now, yeah. people. <laughs> and his wife, Rita, had one child when they got married, Sharon, which Bob adopted. His last child was born after his death in 1981. Even though Bob Marley had numerous hits, in Jamaica and throughout the world, to name a few of those hits that he had that went international. There was Steer It Up, Waiting in Vain, Satisfy My Soul, Get Up, Stand Up, Soul Rebel, Exodus, Three Little Birds, Buffalo Soldier, and Redemption Song. Mm -hmm. And that's just only a few. 
Bob was an activist, a philanthropist, and a writer and composer, and a musician. Unfortunately, Bob died May 11, 1981, having cancer, which began in his toe after a soccer game accident. Rest in peace, Bob Marley. We love you. And that's yeah. my boy. Uh, yeah, you got a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. I ain't gonna say nothing though. <laughs> so, uh, what you got going on? Well, you know what? I, I want to talk about the uh, black politicians in this country. Mm -hmm. Did you know of the 101 facts that I have found out? This is, this is probably, without a doubt, the most little known fact about uh, black history. Um, it's been buried. Mm -hmm. to be to be to be sure um but there was at one time over 1500 black politicians oh, really? in political office in this country pre 1900 oh okay All right okay. And, and the reconstruction era but so, that must have been was that was that in the south or was that in the it north it was in the in the entire united states well, the only reason why I'm asking is because of um, um, slavery, mm -hmm. um, which well, didn't end until well, six, uh, 1863. Ex exactly. Okay. But it, when you consider, we're talking about something, when they say Reconstruction era, um, that must there, have been from 1863 to like 1891 or something like 1877. that. 1877. Okay. And then the crazy part is, this was free KKK and all of this other nonsense. That yeah, happened. yeah. So we're looking at a time in America when everyone in America had an open mind about how things work. And I'm going to give you the name of the first six black politicians, senators, representatives, and office holders all elected to office. Okay. All right. So the very first six black Politicians, representative senators. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, 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 am I understanding you correctly? The six black politicians that are in office right now. There are the six. No, in 1863. Oh, in 1863. The, okay. The first six black senators and or representatives or office holders, be they mayors, congressmen. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to give you the very first six by name only. Okay. And you're going to be surprised what uh, political party they all were with. Oh, I won't be surprised. Some people will be. Yeah, a lot will be, but I <laughs> won't be. Okay, so the first person I have is Senator Hiram, H-I-R-A-M Revels, R-E-V-E-L-S. He is a Republican from Mississippi. Okay. All right. The second one was Robert DeLarge, Republican from South Carolina. Third one, the, 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 the next one is Representative Benjamin S. Turner, a Republican mm -hmm. from Alabama. Mm -hmm. Number, and the next one was Josiah Walls, a Republican from Florida. The next two are office holders. They are not rep representatives or senators or congressmen. His name, the first one is Joseph Rainey, a Republican from South Carolina, and Robert B. Elliott, a Republican from South Carolina. Now, let me just interject there. The reason why they were Republicans, because this country was founded as a republic. Yes. And the Republican Party back during that time was the more sympathetic yes. party. Empathetic. Than, empathetic. Or empathetic. Empathetic, sympathetic, however you want to call it, to the plight of the poor man. Exactly. Uh, Democrats were more elitist. Yes, Democrats were the then. elites back they then. They were the elites back I, then. I, because, you know, um, and, and, and this all dovetails back to the, the, the recent election that we had. I lost, I, I didn't lose, I gave up a lot of ignorant people who think that just because that they are Republicans now, that they are somehow... Uh, the same Republicans that ran the country back in those days during the Reconstruction era. Uh, and, no, and it I was just a want, different group of guys. Right. I want to make different a, party altogether. Right. Well, I want to make a point that the information I get, I'm getting is from a historian named Cantor Brown Jr. out of Wikipedia. I want to make okay. sure that I give him his props for that. So, you know, this was during the Reconstruction era of 1863 and 1877. Over 1,500 black politicians 
in the United States government today. Now ask me how many states in our union have black senators right now? So how many states? Six. Wow. Only six. Only six? Only six. And none of them are in the South. One oh, wow. In, one is in California. Mm-hmm. One is in Illinois. Mm-hmm. Uh, the rest are on the East Coast. Who's in Illinois, you know? <laughs> Here, wait a minute. But you know what? Illinois I'm, I'm Senator. <laughs> <laughs> She's asking Siri people because you know what? Tammy Duckworth and Dick Durbin. So there's no Tammy, Tammy Duckworth, Tammy Duckworth is black. She's an African American. No, D- Tammy yeah, Duckworth you. is not a uh, uh, African American. She not by far. is. She is Hispanic. Yes, she is. But, right. But you know what? I'm doing a. I'm doing some research now on the statistics of that, and in, in in its entirety right now, it's for a later date. Mm-hmm. Um. But the, that's this just shows you how the numbers have been fudged over the years. Um. How the 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 white community, and this is not meant to be a besmirch on them, um, on anybody, but it's just a historical fact. They have fudged the numbers. They have hidden the historical facts. And you know, you and I were just talking about it on the break about uh, uh, Black Wall Street yeah. and how it just it didn't just live in one state. Guys, if you're just tuning in, you're listening to the Jamaica Funk Show with KT and Joe. If you want to hear any of our prior podcasts, you can find them right here on www.spreaker.com. And you can also download the Spreaker app, that's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, app to your mobile device, and you can tune in and listen to us weekly. We're on Tuesdays at 8.15, Thursdays at 9.15, and um no Thursdays at at nine fifteen. We go on nine fifteen at nine fifteen. No, we go on yeah, we go on at <laughs> I'm sorry guys. We go She's on so at eight fifteen tonight. on Thursdays, <laughs> nine fifteen on Wednesdays. And we're simulcast people. And we're, we're simulcast. We Facebook Live on Thursday night, simulcast on iHeartRadio on the Jamaica Funk Show. So you can watch us or you can just listen to it. And you can also go to our website, which is www.jamaicafunkshow.com. And as Joe would say, one-stop shopping. Yes, You'll find is, honey. all our videos yes, and you will. our radio shows and uh, Joe's poetry. Christos Furs. Absolutely. And by the way, Christos Furs is running a storage sale right now. So, and they're out of Westchester, Illinois. Um, get on down there and get your coat, your fur coat stored for ninety nine dollars, and that stores your coat until January twenty eighteen. Okay, so you want to go to forty two eleven Sir Mac Road in Westchester, Illinois. Not forty two eleven. Oh, that's that's not even the right store. <laughs> four eleven. Listen, no, no, no. It's one o four eleven Sir Mac Road in okay, Westchester, so I, Illinois. I was gonna have a. She had a brain cramp, but we we gonna get past That's that. Anyways, guys, there will be more. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we we the, have we have actually come to the end of our show. Uh, yes, time is winding wow, down. <laughs> yes, it did. It shot past <laughs> us. Forty five minutes doesn't last a long time. So, uh, guys, we want to thank you for being with us. Joe, tell people how they can get a hold of your poetry outside of going to www.jamaicafunkshow.com. You can look at everything, Journals of Joe Bright, Mama Said, Joe's Poetry, excerpts from my resume, and my resume on mamayaya.wixsite.com forward slash website. So, without you... There is no us. So we thank you all for joining in tonight. Well, I remind. Yeah, been sitting here, baby.
It's what I find 